So this is part two of the four-wheel drive wagon comparison video and we're going to deal with downhills today and to explain why that's important I have a radio controlled model. So here's our situation. We've got a steep hill, it's low traction because it's pretty dusty, and we're going to put the vehicle at the top of the hill and have its brakes in effect locked and see what happens. Comes down the hill and rolls. Now this is why I use radio controlled models to do these sort of demonstrations. Now we're going to start again, I'm even going to angle it off a little bit like that, and this time I'm just going to drive it down the hill and you can see it works absolutely fine. So I angle it off even more. All right, so why did that work the second time? Well, it wasn't because the wheels were being braked. That wasn't actually the reason. Because if the wheels are being braked, they would just lock and then the vehicle would roll because there's maximum braking being applied as um, with the vehicle at the moment, as you can see. What's actually happening is that I'm forcing the wheels to turn at a very slow speed. And that's what's keeping the vehicle under control. Because as it comes down the hill, yeah, it's sliding a bit, but because those wheels are actually being forced to turn, we've got a little bit of traction. They're not locking up. Once a wheel locks up, then you've got no steering left whatsoever. Now, even if the wheels are turning at a slower speed than the vehicle is coming down the hill, we have some control. And that is why it's a good idea to use a very low gear in a four-wheel drive when you come down the hill because you are forcing those wheels to turn as opposed to braking. When you're braking them, you are trying to stop them from turning. And when you stop them from turning, that happens. It tends to slide sideways a bit. But when you force them to turn, you've always got some semblance of traction. Now the vehicle's wheels are locked, maximum braking. You can see that the car just goes sideways and it just tips and it comes down the hill pretty quick. Here, we are forcing those wheels to turn and the car is actually traveling just a little bit faster than the wheels are turning. You can see it here quite clearly in the slow-mo. The car's at times going faster than the wheels are being forced to turn, yet we get some control. Now what you don't necessarily need to do is accelerate out. Everyone's going to say, oh, accelerate out. And yes, that can work. But if you've got the technique right in the first place, you don't need to accelerate that hard. Now, the way it works in full-size four wheel drives, we've got something called low range in pretty much all of them, and that is a crawler set of gears. And then you engage a low gear, and then you've got that ability to come down a hill in a very incredibly controlled, smooth manner. Now what I'm going to do is bring the model down the hill and turn the steering wheel, as you can see, and it makes no difference. So model sliding, brakes a lot. I'm going to turn that wheel, there it is, and you can see that the car just simply doesn't recover because the front wheels cannot grip at all. Now, if we only had those front wheels actually rotating, even if it's not as fast as the car is going downhill, like that, then you can see the car comes right and we're good to go. Okay, now let's talk about heat, which is another reason why you want to use a low gear descending hill. Any time a vehicle slows down, it's basically transferring um, kinetic energy into another form of energy, typically heat. And you can think of brakes simply as a device to turn kinetic energy into, in, sorry, he, yeah, kinetic energy into heat. Now, if you do enough long downhills, those brakes are going to overheat. So that's another reason to use engine braking. But you still use engine braking even on a short hill when uh, braking overheating isn't going to be a problem. So now you know why using a low gear is so important downhill, let's take a look at the test and what we did with the four vehicles. Now the test we did, first gear low range, no brakes, no hill descent control system, and all vehicles took the same line. Now the factors involved in how slow a vehicle will come down a hill, first of all you need a really low gear, which is your core ratio, I'm going to explain that in a moment. You need an engine which resists the wheels turning, typically that's high compression with lots of cylinders. You want small diameter wheels, the opposite of what you'd normally have for off-roading, that's to minimize the effective um, gear ratio, and you want the vehicle to be as 
as light as possible. So those are some of the main factors. Now the crawl ratio, this is what we mean by crawl ratio, it's the lowest gear. So we start with first gear, which might be, let's say, four to one, that's in the gearbox like any normal car. And then we've got a transfer case reduction, which is when we put the vehicle into low range, that might be two or three to one. And then we've got a final drive, which is the differential ratio. And typically the differential ratio is the same on the front as the rear, but not always, but generally. So let's see how that works with a Land Cruiser 300 series. 4.9 times 2.6 times 3.7 gives us 42.6. So we call that a 42.6 to one crawl ratio, probably round up to 43 to one. So let's introduce the vehicle. So we've got a petrol V8 Nissan Patrol running slightly taller tyres. We've got a sorry, JLR Defender 250 running standard diameter tyres. We have an Ineos Grenadier Trialmaster, 3 litre 6 cylinder diesel. And finally we've got the Toyota Land Cruiser LC300 also running standard diameter tyres. So all four vehicles at the top of the hill, exactly the same place. When my spotter lowers his hand, they'll set off. First gear, low range, no brakes, no hill descent control, and the last one to the bottom of the hill will win the race. So the drivers have let their foot off the brakes and they're off. And it's starting to pan out pretty much as you'd expect. The Grenadier's got by far the best crawl ratio, so that's doing the best of all. Kind of surprised the Defender's not a bit slower than what it actually is, but the Patrol's the quickest being heavy um, petrol and uh, not a particularly great call ratio by comparison or Toyota's doing a little bit better. So yeah, the Grenadier definitely wins this particular right, turn, round. Um, we'll have to see how it does in the remainder of the off-road tests. So hope you found that video useful. Any questions, please drop them in the comments. Thank you for watching and stand by for further off-road comparisons between these four vehicles.